Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon each and every one of you here. My name is Haroon. I am the uh, co-president of the Islamic Society here at Birmingham. And my name is Halima, and I'm the other co-president of the Islamic Society. I will be your, ghost, your host for this evening. And welcome to the community of Tar. So on behalf of the Islamic Society and the Multi-Faith Chaplaincy, we're so honored to have each and every one of you here with us today. Before we get started, because this is such a large scale event, the biggest community iftar, as far as I know, to be hosted in the UK. I'm sure all of you want to take pictures and videos, and we're more than happy for all of you to do so. All we ask is when you post on social media, please hashtag UOB iftar. So what actually is a community iftar? The word community, I think, is quite self-explanatory. People from different faiths, backgrounds, faculties, walks of life coming together for one, hopefully, amazing evening. But what is an iftar? Iftar is actually an Arabic word, which means to break one's fast. Now, as I'm sure you know, we are in the blessed month of Ramadan, which is where Muslims fast from dawn till sunset. So from about four o'clock, four or five o'clock in the morning till about eight o'clock at night, where we abstain from food and water. Yes, water from the start of day to the end of the day. Now, the question arises, surely that's impossible, surely that's too hard. We love food too much, we, love, we need to have lunch, we're gonna, be, we're gonna not be able to survive without any food. But actually, if you ask any Muslim or anybody who actually has practiced in this month, they will say the opposite which is actually that this is the month that they love. This is the month that they're looking forward to more than any other month in the whole year. Why is that? Why is that the case? Because that kind of seems contradictory. It's because Ramadan for us is more than just leaving food. Ramadan for us is a time that we connect to our communities. It's a time that we connect to our families, to our friends, and obviously to God. So, why do we fast? What, what's the point behind it? God explains in the Quran, which is our holy book, that fasting has been prescribed upon us as it was prescribed upon those before us so that we may gain God consciousness. For us, God and his teachings is the walking light that we use to guide ourselves through our, to, to, through our lives. So the plan for today was really to share some of that Ramadan spirit with each and every one of you, that Ramadan vibe, the, the spirit that we like to live through this month and uh, hopefully through the rest of the course this evening, you'll get to uh, have some of that uh, amazing time with us. A hundred percent. And Ramadan is not just about fasting, like Harun said. It's also about increasing other acts of worship. So yes, we fast through the day, we pray through the night. But it's also about doing what we can to help our neighbours and our families and our friends, caring for one another, sharing with each other, just doing that little bit extra in order to gain the pleasure of God. You know, refraining from bad habits, spreading positivity. As Muslims, it's our duty to be ambassadors of peace and respect between ourselves and the wider community. And the Islamic Society here at UOB is the biggest faith society and one of the biggest societies here. And we have a range of campaigns that we host throughout the year in order to foster this sort of spirit. The Ramadan project is one of our campaigns that we host. So we've had iftars every day on campus. So many of you have been there. We've had different talks surrounding mental health different gatherings with reminders, Quran classes, all with the hope of bettering ourselves as people and leaving this month as refined. And we're so lucky that we're in a community, we're at a university that supports us, the multi-faith chaplaincy, the Guild of Students, here to support us and help us to grow and have a space, a free space where we can worship freely and connect with one another and build more friendships. And the community Iftar is just one of these examples that we're able to do this. The Islamic Society also hosts a campaign called the Believe and Do Good campaign. This is where we encourage ourselves to give charity, but not just in the form of wealth, also in the form of giving our time, being there for the community, volunteering at homeless shelters, all in the hope of building a stronger and better community. And I hope that this evening you're all able to benefit from this and enjoy it, all the delicious food that we have. And we're so, so happy and excited to have all of you here with us. Uh, 
Um, so the plan for the evening is we're going to have, we are so lucky to have so many special guests with us here today and you're going to hear from a few of them. Then after the speeches we'll congregate outside to break the fast and pray. For those of us who are not praying, you're welcome to, to watch us or join us if you like and then we'll all sit down and have iftar. Uh, but without further ado, Hari will introduce our first speaker. So the first person I'd like to invite to the stage is Professor Gavin Schaefer, who is the head of the Chaplaincy Committee. And yeah, so welcome up to the stage. Wow. Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Kareem, brothers and sisters. As chair of our multi-faith chaplaincy, I'm delighted to be with you here tonight and delighted that we've been able to support our Islamic society who have worked so hard to put on this beautiful and holy event. At our chaplaincy, we celebrate and support the place of faith, community and tradition in our university. Indeed, this university is a special place where people with all kinds of faith backgrounds live and work together enhancing our workplace with their wisdom and history, their traditions and their culture. Our Muslim student body and our Muslim staff body make such a key contribution to that. You are a huge part of what we are, who we are, and nights such as tonight add great richness and joy to our university calendar. This year, Ramadan, the Jewish festival of Passover and Easter have all overlapped each other, an event that occurs apparently only every 33 years. It seems timely that we're brought together in this particular year, three Abrahamic faiths in these troubled times, each drawing on our histories and traditions in a spirit of penitence, love and reflection, together in prayer as we strive for peace. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of the University Chaplaincy, I wish you a blessed Ramadan. May your fast be accepted, and in the coming days, I wish you a blessed Eid. Many thanks and blessings to you all. Thank you so much, Gavin, for that. And just to reiterate what Professor Gavin said, it is so true, we're so lucky that the chaplaincy has provided a space where we can connect with so many different faiths and beliefs and work together as one. Um, our next speaker, we're very excited and honoured to have him here with us today. Most of you will know him. It's Mayor Andrew Street. Asalaamu Alaikum and good evening, everybody. So first of all, can I say to our two wonderful presidents of the Islamic Society here, thank you for putting this together and for bringing us together tonight. It really is incredible. And if it's genuinely true that this is the biggest community iftar anywhere in Britain, even in Europe, that's an incredible achievement. So thank you for presiding over it. Now I should be very brief because I know we have to be on time because I understand it would be a terrible thing to overrun tonight. But I did just want to say two things about two things that I understand are critical elements of Ramadan. The first is about reflection, and of course the second is about charity. And the month of Ramadan, the Muslims across the region will have been taking time to reflect. And what I've reflected on myself is that we've seen the strength of community like never before. Over the last two years, the region, the city, the university, everybody's been challenged. And what I've learned is the faith communities have all played an absolutely critical role in seeing us through that difficult time. And what I've also seen at every community iftar that I've been to across the region over the last few weeks is that the Muslim community is working hard to reach out and make sure other faith leaders are involved in their reflections this month as well. So thank you for what you're doing to bring all communities together, because it is the bedrock of our society. And then the second reflection 
is really just about the importance of charity. And I know that for Muslims across the world, this month will have been the focus of charitable activities. And if you take just one organization, uh, Islamic Relief, founded in Birmingham in 1984, and now providing relief to literally tens of countries across the world, hundreds of millions of pounds. It just reflects what can be done across the Muslim faith to make a change across the world. Made in Birmingham, now influencing the whole world. So thank you for what is being done by your charitable organisations as well. So that's all I have to say. I should conclude by just wishing you all a very blessed Ramadan. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't, reiter I can't thank you enough for uh, talking about how essential charity is in our faith and how essential us coming together, especially after two years of COVID. So thank you so much. Our next speaker is one of the Muslim chaplains here at Birmingham. Uh, we have Imam Adil Salim coming up. He's from the Green Lane Masjid and we're delighted to have him on stage. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. So I was told to speak about Islam and the community. I was really excited. But then I was told I only have four minutes. I wasn't very excited. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was known to be from the most eloquent of people. He was known to have the most concise speech. And I want to share with you a statement of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll say the words in Arabic and I'll translate in English. Where he said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, afshu salam, spread Greetings. And feed people. And uphold the ties of kinship. He said that pray the night prayer when people are asleep and you will enter paradise with peace, with serenity, with ease. These are powerful words from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Powerful words. And really, this is the bedrock of society. These are values and words which build communities. Spreading peace. Being nice to one another. Meeting one another with a smile. This is community. Feeding one another. Feeding people. Looking at those who have less than us. Looking out for those people who need support and assistance. This is community. Joining or upholding ties of kinship. We know that the family is a bedrock of society, of the community. We know that when there is a tight-knit family, we have a tight-knit community. But where we have a dysfunctional family, we have a dysfunctional community. So a family and the family body is a reflection on the community and vice versa. And then finally, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, which is the most important thing, pray, connect with God. Why? Because this is going to lead us to the greatest of our objectives in life, which is paradise. As Muslims, we believe that there's an end. We believe that we will be held accountable. So when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned all of these values, he connected them back to our pinnacle, the reason why we were created, to worship one God. And this is extremely important when, because when we have that connection with Allah Azza wa Jal, our connection with people improve. And our place in society and our community builds and increases and goes from strength to strength. And I was thinking about this community iftar here today. This community iftar embodies this statement of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People are here greeting one another. People are being fed. People are bonding with one another. And once, once this all finishes and people go home, people will be praying at night. The night prayer. In these last few days of Ramadan, 
Because this is what Ramadan is about. It's increasing our connection, our good consciousness with Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is what builds a great community. Thank you all for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Imam Adil, for those words. Um, it's definitely something I think we can all take something from, no matter what our beliefs are. So thank you very much for that. Um, next up, we have the Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor here with us, Professor Deborah Longworth. Hello everyone, assalamu alaikum. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the University of Birmingham, to our students, but also families, friends, wider community, um, to our beautiful campus and to this wonderful hall in which so many of our students over the years have taken their exams and with bigger smiles a few months later attended their graduation ceremonies. And it's fantastic that tonight it's playing host to the wonderful exhibition and these speeches uh, for the opening of, of our community iftar. Birmingham was England's first civic university. Its very purpose was to serve and support its local community. From our beginnings, all students, students from all religions and backgrounds were accepted on an equal basis. And we continue to welcome students from over 145 nationalities and many religious beliefs to our academic community to inquire, to learn, to innovate, and to shape ideas and solutions together to meet the challenges of now and of our future. Last week, we celebrated the official opening of our new campus in Dubai with its symbol of the interlocking leaves of the oak tree and the palm representing our global cultural and educational collaboration and exchange. We value and celebrate the diversity of our education community as our strength. One in 10 of our students are Muslim, almost 4,000 will observe the holy month of Ramadan. It is all the more special that we can host this event in our cultural calendar today after two years of the pandemic restrictions that have separated us as a community in body, if not in spirit. And it's been, it was fantastic for me today to walk around the campus and see so many of our students relaxing or revising outside on the grass together, to see the very busy preparations for this evening and to see our visitors enjoying and exploring and taking photographs of the campus. Our campus is for everyone. It's a joy to see it coming to life again and it's a privilege to share it with you this evening. I'd like to say a huge thanks to our Islamic Society, all of our student volunteers who've worked so hard to make this a success. And I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming up and talking about exactly what you spoke about in terms of the, the how many faiths and how many different backgrounds that we have here. I mean, having that exposure is so important for life and meeting people from every different background, from every different kind of background, you can learn something new. So I think it's so critical. Our next speaker that I'd love to invite is Mr. John Ellsmore, the Director of Student Services. Good evening, uh, assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to say just a very few uh, brief words this evening. And I wanted to pick up some of the threads that Deborah had mentioned in talking about the importance of our students and our student society uh, in today's events. For those of you that haven't been on campus all day today, you won't necessarily have seen members of the Islamic Society uh, here since early this morning, since 10 o'clock, uh, preparing the events and activities uh, that are going to take place throughout the day and into this evening. Many members of the Islamic Society have already said thank you to the university uh, this evening, uh, and I'm sure we will uh, exchange thank yous some more as the evening goes on. But I wanted to say very clearly this evening Thank you to the Islamic Society for being one of the most important societies on our campus. 
All events like this require a huge amount of organisation and one of the parts of my job is that many forms, there are always forms, the university uh, works on forms, forms come across my desk for approval for events. And when I get a series of forms that come from the Islamic society, I immediately know that it's going to be incredibly well organised, well thought through and well considered and that we, the university, can trust and value all of the Islamic society and all of their leaders to put on something that we know is going to be a terrific event. I genuinely sit every morning with my Islamic society mug, uh, that's what I drink uh, my tea from uh, every day uh, that was given to me uh, a couple of years ago uh, by members of the society and I wanted and I hope that you would recognise those of you that are members of the society and those of you that are not the enormous amount of work uh, that goes into events like this and how much of it is student-led. Yes, the university has um, uh, enabled the access uh, to the hall and the grounds, but we've done no more than that. Everything else, our students have done that. The society has done that, and we couldn't be more proud of them in having organised this, what we hope will be the largest community iftar in the United Kingdom, organised by our students our Islamic society. Thank you to everybody uh, involved in the organisation uh, of today, but thank you in particular to our students who have led this. Thank you very much. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you very much for that. Um, you're completely correct in saying organising an event this big is not easy. And if we didn't have the support from the student service team or the university, it wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much. So our next speaker is, doc is Dr. Rahana Praveen, who is a senior law lecturer here at University of Birmingham. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, peace and blessings and the mercy of Allah uh, upon all of you. Um, my name is Rahana Parveen and I'm a senior lecturer in the law school here at the University of Birmingham. I'm privileged and honoured to be here today um, when we're in the last few days of Ramadan. This month has almost come to an end um, for all of us. And I want to recognize that actually this is a really tough month for all of us. It's a tough month for students. It's a tough month for academics, for everybody who is um, fasting. You have your work, your study, family and home life commitments. Um, I spend my evenings at the masjid actually at Green Lane um, every night praying up until um, the, the suhoor time. Um, but as was mentioned earlier, this is a month that I absolutely love. And I love it because it gives me the opportunity for one month of the year to completely change my priorities. My priorities in this month are my spirituality and I put that first and foremost. And my work and the rest of my life revolves around that. For the other 11 months of the year, my work and all those commitments come first and my spirituality is fitted around it. But this month, this month is one in which God provides me with the opportunity to put my spirituality first and to put everything else around it. Um, I get to reflect on my relationship with God. I get to reflect on who I am and why have I been placed on this earth. And that sounds like, you know, some really deep stuff that I'm thinking about. But given particularly what's happened in the last few years, the, the trauma of the pandemic that we've all faced, um, Everybody, I think, has had opportunities to reflect on their own lives. Um, and this month has really helped me to think through some of that trauma and also to think through, you know, where am I going with my life and how spirituality fits into it. As a female practicing Muslim in academia, I think universities have come a long way in supporting us as, as Muslims, as Muslim academics and as Muslim students. But as has been mentioned already, the backbone of any work, the backbone of any radical change, the backbone of any resistance, the backbone of anything comes from the bottom up and comes from students. It comes from student activism, students um, participating, students engaging. And I'm so happy to see the students that are engaging in all of this. You know, from our 
Muslim, black and ethnic minority students and allies who've pushed for change, who've pushed for, and I put in speech marks accommodation, because I don't actually really like that word accommodation at all. You know, the word accommodation seems to suggest that some favors are being bestowed on people and that they're being accommodated. Um, but the way that I see it, we are all part and parcel of the societies that we live in. Um, and I say this with my Brummie accent, you know, we are Birmingham, we are the UK, this is what this country looks like. So we are um, not representing the society, we are the society in which we live. And for all students here, I would absolutely encourage you and push you into careers in academia if that's what you're interested in. Because I think it's really important when you're part and parcel of a society to be part of the intellectual community that is driving that society as well, that is thinking about the change. So from the student activism right up into the positions of power, you are part and parcel of everything that this city, this university, and that this country has to offer. Um, and I say that as not just a some kind of tick box performative inclusion, I say that with a genuine commitment to wanting good for the societies that we live in, for each and every person that is a member of it. You know, our prophet, peace be upon him, commanded us to love for each other as brothers and sisters what we love for ourselves. And what I see tonight is an actual embodiment of that command. Um, so in that regard, I mean, this, this community iftar, I think, gives me huge hope for the generation of students that are coming, that are doing um, active, good work, um, working hard, participating in education, but also participating in the communities that they're living in. And I pray that you see the rewards of all of that in this life. I pray that you see the rewards of that in the um, generations of students that are to come and in the next life. So huge thanks. It's been an honor and privilege to be here. Um, and I um, hope everybody enjoys the evening and Eid Mubarak as well for the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I, I really hope that that inspired people because if, 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 if you're not getting inspired by that, then you're never going to get inspired to pursue academia and to think about it if it is a thing for you. And for us to actually move forward as a society, it's something that's so essential for us to, to take part of. So thank you so much. The next person I'd love to have on stage with us is um, Reverend M uh, Mindy Bell from the Methodist uh, Chaplaincy. So come on stage. Thank you. Good evening. I am one of the Christian chaplains, more specifically a Methodist, and just one of the chaplains on the multi-faith chaplaincy team. The chaplaincy, if you don't know it and haven't been there, is tucked around the back of the Guild of Students between there and Edgebaston Park Road. I invite you to come by and check it out because we're there to support students and staff. Students and staff of all faiths and those of none, but to support them as together we dig into questions of truth, of ethics, of purpose, of meaning. That's what the chaplaincy is here to do. And I have the honor this evening of representing all the various chaplains of the vibrant faith communities represented on campus. I want to thank, on the chaplaincy's behalf, ISOC and our Muslim chaplains for organizing this event and sharing it with us as a way to share who you are and what you believe. It's a good thing that lots of our faith traditions share the value of hospitality and gathering around a table. Because community is built as we eat together, as we hear each other's stories. It gives us the opportunity to learn from and with each other. For example, as a Christian, 
I learned something from the self-discipline that Muslims demonstrate at Ramadan in prayer and fasting. Because fasting, too, is part of my tradition, especially during the season of preparation for Easter. But honestly, compared to the structure of Ramadan, Christian fasting is generally looser about its rules. And I have learned something from the Muslim practice of fasting in a way in which my life is enriched. Because after all, it's easy to say what we believe, but it's harder to live it out. Fasting, prayer, and charity, and any other practices of faith, of any faith, ground us in habits which bring life and hope. And the chaplaincy would like to support you to live out those practices as part of your daily life. And so once again, I'd like to thank you for inviting us all to share this meal. Because as we partake of the delicious food I'm sure that has been prepared, we can truly encounter each other and each other's stories. May it be so, and Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you so much, Reverend Lindy, for that. Um, one thing that is so amazing about this university is how closely the different faiths work within the multi-faith chaplaincy. And would like to thank you personally for all the work that you have done in supporting us and helping us. The Islamic Society do really appreciate it. Um, so the next speaker is someone who's very, very special to us. Um, someone who's very special to the current and old ISOC committee. Someone who was co-president at the time of the last community iftar and left very big shoes to fill. And we're so, so happy she's here with us today. So can I please call Mariam Mahfou? Assalamu alaikum everyone, um, peace and blessings be upon all of you. To be honest, I wasn't that nervous when I was asked to do this speech. Uh, now I feel very nervous. <laughs> I wasn't aware that I'd be the last one coming up here. Um, as I said, my name's Mariam. Um, I graduated from this university, gosh, about two, three years ago now. Um, and as like I said, in my final year, I was the co-president of the Islamic Society. Um, essentially, I've been asked to just come up here and reminisce about my time at university. And like a lot of us, our time as students or as university students really do have a big impact in our lives. Um, and that's the same for me. Granted, I'm only 23. There could be some other big events that happen. But at this time, you, the, my time here was very, very special to me. Um, there's a lot of things that I could talk about, but as this is Ramadan and as this is the community of Thar, I will be focusing on what Ramadan at UOB really meant to me and what it meant to a lot of us. As uh, Halima and Harun mentioned, um, Ramadan is a month in which Muslims fast. That is quite fundamentally what it means. But Ramadan is also a time where Muslims realize that a large part of our religion lies in our interactions with other people. And it is one of the beauties of Ramadan that it can take the solitary act of fasting and make it something communal, something that we share as a community. Um, as a student, Ramadan is very hard. You're away from your families, you're away from perhaps the only community you ever knew, and you're coming to this strange new environment and you are trying to figure out what does Ramadan mean here. We're very fortunate at UOB, like was mentioned before, that through generations and legacy, uh, Ramadan here is something that is not shared at a lot of other universities. We're able to 
open iftar on campus every single night, regardless of whether it's exam time or not, whether it is holidays or not. Um, during the Easter holidays, there would have been iftar still going on. There were people that would still have been coming in when they don't need to be here to put on iftars for their community. Um, and one thing that I can always, we're very lucky to also have is a chaplaincy, a home on campus. Ramadan to me meant being in the chaplaincy, you know, all night, staying until midnight, driving Alex crazy, leaving him food in the fridge in the morning for whatever bad thing we had done, um, you know, dragging the chaplains out of their offices and, you know, force feeding anyone that we could find. Um, I remember one time, somehow, we managed to order too much food and that meant we spilled over to the guild and were trying to give as much food away as possible. But these, all of these experiences uh, made Ramadan on campus one of the sweetest memories that I have. Ramadan on campus was a family reunion. People that you would never see, people that hid in the law libraries or law schools or hid in med school would come together in Ramadan and you'd only see them in Ramadan, but it felt like you were seeing your long, you know, your, your cousins or whoever after a very, very long time. Um, so, oh, where can I go from here? Um, so what, I'm, what I guess I'm trying to say is that we, not just us now, the Muslim students that are here or the Muslim alumni, long ago when Muslim students began coming to UOB as international students decided to make this their community. Uh, the Islamic society at UOB is one of the oldest Islamic societies in the whole country. Um, and in the beginning, they had humble goals, you know, find somewhere that we can pray, um, you know, somewhere that we could do wudu, somewhere that we could just kind of exist. And those goals have now elevated to what you are seeing now. What is happening today has been built on the backs of all of those students that came before us and the legacy that they have built. Um, and I think what makes this year even more astounding to me is that back in 2019, when we came to Alex and the chaplaincy with this mad idea, like we were like, the chaplaincy is too small. We want to go bigger. We want to go outside. We want to go to the Green Heart. And thankfully, the university put enough trust in us to let us do it because the Green Heart was brand new then. Uh, no one had touched it. We were the first event that had ever happened there. And then as we know, the last two years has really challenged us all. In Islam, there's a really amazing prophetic legacy around being good to your neighbor. Um, you know, our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him honor his neighbor. And for the last two years, honoring our neighbors has meant staying away to not get together, to not share food, you know, share a meal and to protect each other through our distance. And to see that after these last two years, what the society has put on to honor the community that they have chosen and to show that we do see this um, society and this university as our community is astounding because they've doubled the numbers. They have, you know, it's something that really makes me very proud to be an alumni. Um, uh, coming onto the campus and reminiscing, um, it's just amazing to see what's going on. Do I have to keep going? Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> Alex told me to keep going for a while. Um, but thank you, everyone. Um, in the Quran, it says, you know, to honor your guests in the best possible way. And what better way is there to share a meal? And what better meal is there than at iftar? And I hope that when you go out, you will see that your company will be the sweetest, that the atmosphere will be the warmest, and the food will be absolutely delicious. So thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Mariam. It's on your steps that we actually have created this today. So thank you so much for all your efforts in the past and now. For our next speaker, he's from across the pond. And I've only known him for a few months, but it's, feel like, it's felt like I've known him for a lifetime. Brother Ajma'een. Thank you. Uh, wow, it's a big crowd. Uh, I greet you all, the greetings of the Muslims, of the angels, of the righteous, of the prophet, the messengers, and certainly of the Lord Most High. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Uh, before I start, I think it's only appropriate. Can we get a round of applause for the committee members and all the volunteers? I was told to speak about Ramadan and what it means to me. And Ramadan is, as rightly said, it's the month of Quran. We believe that the Quran was sent down to our Prophet in this month. Uh, so we reconnect with God through the Quran by reading with it, by reflecting on it. This is the month of transformation, as rightly said by Mayor, that this is the month we reflect, we replan, we plan up for the rest of the year. And this was the way of the prophets. Prophet Abraham, Moses, John the Baptist, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them all. This is that month where we get together and we eat together. But fasting isn't just fasting of the stomach, it is fasting of the heart, from jealousy, from anger, from envy, and so on. As Imam Al-Ghazali says, when we fast, we're basically constricting and disciplining two of the main driving forces, the eros drive, which is the desire to live in love, and the satiation for food and water. And he says, if you can control those, discipline those, you can rightly, everything is easy from there on and there forth. But the truth is, when you get that narrative, it is very personal. It's between you and God. But I miss my family. But this is where the wisdom of God comes in, the hikmah, as we call it in Arabic. God made it that, yes, it's a relationship with Him, but it's also a relationship with the community and the people. For example, this iftar, when people from every walk of life is here to eat together. Today we had the Friday prayers, the Jum'a prayers. We get together and we congregate and we pray together. The suhoor, when we are permitted to eat for the rest of the day, apologies for that, we wake each other up. So that's the wisdom of God that even though, yes, dedicate your time for me, but don't forget your neighbors, as rightly mentioned by all. But I keep on saying it, I still miss my family. We plan, I plan, you plan, and we all plan, but the truth is only God's plan is executed. I came here, as he said so, I came in February, I didn't know anyone. But just because I believed in God and His Prophet, I came here to find a new family. And I don't mean that lightly. Funny enough, uh, so a lot of our friends, 14 to 12 of us, uh, we're, we're all congregated in one house together. We eat there, we cook together, we wake each other for prayers, we pray together. If you go to certain parts of the house, you'll see people doing practice interviews. And uh, rightly so, we call it the refuge point. Uh, so you're more than welcome to join us there. But that's the beauty of being Muslim. Just because I believe in God and His Prophet, I came across knowing no one, absolutely no one, and I found another family. So I say I left my family to join another family where we compete with each other to do good and push each other to do good. Um, I know I don't have much time, but on that note, I will say best of luck with all your exams and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'm sure we can all take something beneficial from all the speeches that we've had and a big thank you to all of our guests for coming down today and taking the time um, to spend it with us. Um, I'm sure that we all would have wanted to hear from many, many more people um, to come down and address the community today, but unfortunately due to time limitations, we weren't able to do so. So we want to take this time to thank specific and notable people that have been such a help to our community and with the prep for today. Um, first and foremost, the multi-face chaplaincy for all the work that you have done in supporting us and making it easy for us to put on this event. So a big, big thank you to the multi-face chaplaincy. I also want to do a special mention to Alex, who has honestly been amazing. I know we have been a pain <laughs> sometimes, like Mariam rightly said, but you have been so patient with us, and we are so thankful for everything that you do, honestly. Thank you, Alex. We also would like to thank our other Muslim chaplain, Paul Armstrong, for everything that he's done to support us, for being a representative of the community amongst the Multi-Faith Chaplaincy Committee.
We want to thank the Guild of Students, Student Services, especially Drew Linforth, for all the help that they have given us in supporting us. Um, and a really big thank you to Exhibition Islam. I'm sure most of you have had a walk around before we started the speeches today. And the posters they've got up, the manuscript they've got up is absolutely amazing. So we're so thankful that you guys were able to come down today um, and display this for us. So thank you to them. We want to also thank each and every one of you for individually coming today because without you guys this event couldn't have happened. So thank you guys for all spending your time to come and uh, listen to these uh, speeches but also for the rest of the evening. So what is the plan for now? The plan for now is to break our fasts. So for those who are fasting to break our fast in about 5-10 minutes. Then there's going to be a call to prayer which is going to be done in Arabic. If you'd like to know what the translation is, uh, volunteers will be around and they will be able to help you to translate what's being said. After that, we're going to break our fast with dates and water as following the tradition of our prophet. So dates, uh, they have a seed inside, so don't eat the seed. <laughs> and then we're all going to sit down and eat. I'd really encourage each and, of, each and every one of you to sit with someone you don't know because this is the chance to meet so many different new people. So sit with someone you've maybe never met before and have a good time, have a good chat. And there's also going to be a prayer outside which you can observe or take part in. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be lots of different food options. If you do have any allergies, please let one of us know, one of the uh, volunteers. We have a list, we have vegetarian food, we have uh, non-vegetarian food. So there's something for everyone. And once again, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming down today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>